it's really great when we get people that are interested in Greenwood Christian School because that means that we possibly are going to add to our school family and we're such a strong community here. It's one of the things that some of our parents cite as their favorite thing about Greenwood Christian School is the community and the Christian atmosphere here. So come on, let me take you on a tour. I like to start right here if you'll look at this wall. This is our wall of honor, I could say. This uh, are awards that are available only to our graduates, so it lets you know exactly where we're pointing. And these students have received the award for Christian integrity, godly leadership, and Christian character. This is where I like to stop and say what our mission is, because we are on mission at Greenville Christian School. That is that we equip the children of Christians with excellent academics, biblical life application, and leadership skills to excel throughout their lives. There's no reason to come here without knowing exactly what we're doing, why we're doing it, what we're doing, and what our outcome is going to be. So come on, and let's show you how we make that happen. It's amazing that we're 43 years old, because most Christian schools are very young. Our school started in North Greenville in a church um, that actually, we weren't affiliated with the church, they just lent us space, because God's blessed us like that along the way. And an arsonist burned our church. Can you believe that? So they had a big, the founders had a big decision to make at that time. Do we move forward? Is God saying a stop? Well, as you can see, they believe that God did not say stop. They acquired this land here. And this is our first building that was on campus. At that time, all of Greenwood Christian School students were in this one small building. Today, this is our secondary building. So we're going to go in here and see where grades 7 through 12 mostly utilize this building, our oldest building on campus. Hello, Mr. Smith. I like to stop right here. Um, I like to stop right here. And this is our um, English department. She has been here for over 20 years. She is also one of the best college. She has to be one of the best college counselors and scholarship counselors that there is. A couple of years ago, we had a class of 17 that earned 2.7 million in scholarships. And uh, that's without everybody even applying. So we have, uh, Kelly Griner is one of our great resources here. This is Mr. Smith. Mr. Smith has been here for? Uh, this is my 23rd year. Okay. We happen to run into Mr. Smith coming down the hall. Mr. Smith, I'm giving a tour oh, of okay. the school right now. Mr. Smith teaches history here, um, and he teaches to grades 7 through 12. Mm -hmm. One of the things that he, the kids actually love is that he does a rite of passage field trip with them in the 7th grade. Oh, yeah. We go every year to the Sulphur River and mm -hmm. look for Indian artifacts and fossils. We found a dinosaur skull one time. You can make sure you get that on the Troy. We will. And, uh, yeah, it's been, been a lot of fun. We always find neat stuff. Okay. All right. So, Mr. Smith is one of them, our favorite teachers. Uh, All right. This is our art room right here. I want to stop. And you can see some of the art on the wall. We have an art teacher who is also excellent in photography. She was voted number one photographer um, in Hunt County just recently. And her name is Emily Bragg. And so students get to come to her class um, in what we call pullouts, which is a pullout in elementary school is that you get to rotate through our pullout classes um, and come do some specialized topics with specialized teachers. And this is one of them starting in second grade they get to come to. So this is our art room, just to give you a quick, as everybody likes to see the ceiling. So very artistic, and one of the fun things that happens, Mrs. Bragg does an art, student art work show at the end of the year. So lots of fun creativity happens in here. We have found through research that, that activating that creative part of your mind and keeping that healthy and going also stimulates the other part of the learning in your brain. So let's move down the hall. Our secondary uh, second language is, uh, is Spanish. So you can take Spanish uh, up through Spanish 3, and Spanish 3 is a dual credit class. 
Um, we also have Bible every day. Um, Bible is in seventh grade, so it is one of our core classes that you would take, and you get a wide variety of exposure in Bible class to a lot of the Bible fundamentals, um, a lot of Bible history and Bible knowledge. I encourage you to get on our website and read our statement of faith. We do represent, our students represent 47 churches at this time out of 230 students. So our, um, we have a basic statement of faith. If it comes to topics like baptism and some of the other topics like that, then we always encourage students to go back to their home church or back to their family for really specific instruction on that. That's how we like to partner with Christian families. If we'll move down this way, then we're getting close to Mr. Smith's room, which is always fun. Um, I like standing in the hall because he has snakes. <laughs> but we that's just one of the fun things about being a small school um, and experiential learning is that you get opportunities to interact with kids on all kinds of levels like that. Now, our math is important. We go all the way up through calculus here. Um, so, And that also becomes dual credit opportunities. Our math teachers are some of our favorites here at Greenville Christian. And then Mr. Smith does a lot of experiential kinds of things in, uh, in history and social studies. You'll, it's not unusual to see him dressed as Roman Caesar or, or some of the other characters um, out of different eras in the, in the Bible. And I'm sorry, over history. And... Um, and sometimes, even like during election time and such, the kids are, he gets the kids so involved in really thinking about the candidates that if there's a debate on television, they'll actually come up here after hours and watch it with him. And, and he pulls them through that thinking process so they can become responsible citizens. I walk all the way to the end because we have a little child touring with me. I always start at the end so that they'll see what's coming. But this is the favorite part if you look out these windows you can get a glimpse of our playground. Why is the playground important? Because we do recess in a big way. I know a lot of schools have done away with recess and play, and we absolutely believe that it's important to get the wiggles out so you can keep learning. Those minds become active, they need to release. Um, just getting your arms and legs moving helps your brain work better. So that's one thing that we do. We're going to make our way back over to the elementary so that we can see what happens over there as well. Now, as we walk, I want to say that our classes for this age group, actually starting in fifth grade, fifth grade is still in elementary here. We start getting them ready for uh, junior high and fifth grade. School runs from 8 to 3.15. Um, we do have after care um, that you can drop kids off. You can drop kids off as early as 7.30 in the morning and it doesn't cost anything extra. And then we have after care until 5.45 that's available. So let's walk through the breezeway and you'll catch another glimpse of the playground. The kids are in after care having a great time. As a matter of fact, a lot of kids beg to stay in after care here because it's playtime. We, again, we have such a close-knit community that they love to play together. We're going to walk down this hall. This hall is pre-K 4 through grades 3. Let's peek in this elementary classroom right here. Hi, Miss Adams. We're just visiting and peeking in. I'm giving a school tour right now. Miss Adams is here. And this is first grade. This is after school hours. Their, their um, chairs are up on their desk. I know they've had a great time today. Thanks for letting us buddy in. As you can see, the school, the school rooms are quite large. Um, our largest class here is in seventh grade. They have 24 in there right now. Our average right now with 230 students is that the class ratio runs around 16 to 1. So let's take a peek in extended care. As you can see, we have some older students in here as well. 
a foosball table and just some fun going on. Thank you guys. We want to just look at some of the artwork and such along the walls as we move this way. So what you're going to see is that we focus a lot on writing, we focus a lot on reading, um, we, do, we do cursive here, which is something that a lot of the schools have stopped, also because we have found that it helps with their hand and eye coordination, it helps with their thinking, and it helps them remember to actually do cursive writing. Who knew? In third grade, they really start writing stories. You can see an example of this, understanding the anatomy of a story and how to communicate well. It's the very basics of research and writing research papers and essays. We start that at a very early age, and our kids are noted that have been here all these years for their ability to write. So it's because they've been practicing a long time. We will stop in here for just a second and take a pick, a, a peek at the library. This is our library. So this is also one of the pull-out classes that the children will experience in elementary. They, our goal in here is to help them uh, continue being intrigued about reading. We do have an AR program that they get points for reading books and um, it's just to have a fun time in here with the librarian. Definitely have entertaining and engaging librarians who help the students learn. All right, let's go on down the hall. These classrooms Right here, these classrooms along this hallway, is that there's also a restroom in the back of the room so that they don't actually have to leave class to go to the restroom, but they can. They also come out here. All these walk doors are kept locked during the day. This is after school, so you're getting to see some after school shots. This is our PK4 room. Um, one of our most fun classes on campus is our four-year-olds. Uh, they begin learning a lot of basics in here that help them learn um, ways to engage in uh, learning, even beyond here. So let's move on. Down this hallway, you're going to find our dyslexia program, which we use Take Flight out of Scottish Rite. We do have a trained specialist here um, that provides a wonderful dyslexia program. As a matter of fact, our last year's valedictorian went through Take Flight, and he has dyslexia too, so congratulations to Kyle Weeks. Here's the room that our students do engage in our Take Flight program. Hi, Ms. Travers. And we do some accommodations as well. Uh, we cannot support kids, unfortunately, who have a greater degree of learning uh, difference, but we always want what's best for the, for the child. So we would let, we always are, um, take the opportunity to let parents know what we can and cannot support so they can make the best decision for their child. This is our elementary computer lab. Lots of fun goes on in here. And then across the hall is our music program, which our music teacher, Ms. Chastain, gives after school lessons, and that's what she's doing. If you can look down this way, you'll also see that Ms. Chastain teaches um, some instruments, and there's some along this wall over here. Yes, it is interesting. As well as choral. So when they get in, um, in the upper grades, and they're primarily getting ready for choir, we do competitions. Um, I didn't mention earlier that we are accredited to the Association of Christian Schools International. We go through a reaccreditation every five years. So they provide some of our competitions that we do, um, sort of like UIL in public school. We do competitions, academic competitions, athletic competitions through 
um, ACSI and through TAPS. Yeah. I want to mention here as we move toward our lunchroom that our students here, I mean, sorry, our teachers here are certified and some of them are dual certified. Um, they have they come here with state certification, but also um, because we are associated through Association of Christian Schools International, there is a Christian school certification as well. This is our, what we call the MPAC, MPAC Center, and it is a multi-purpose activity center. Um, the students eat lunch here, pre-K through six, eat one period, and seven through 12, eat another period. We don't serve lunch here. You would bring your lunch, or we have the opportunity to order out at different restaurants as well. Um, so you would know which restaurant we were ordering from that day, what the menu choices were, and you could order that as well. The school play happens in here. Our volunteer appreciation happens in here. Um, so we will have a leadership expo in here. So a lot of, a lot of different activities. We're moving into now the fifth and sixth grade area. This is where we actually, um, the kids start using lockers. They will change classes with bells, these, just between these two rooms with these two teachers. And it starts uh, getting them ready for junior high activities while not pushing them into that situation too early. Um, our students. We have, right now they're in there practicing Destination Imagination. We have a healthy Destination Imagination program. And at least one of our teams typically winds up in global competitions with it. Destination Imagination is a creative problem solving program that's international. And uh, we find a great deal of benefit it brings to our kids to, to be here in it. So let's walk down this way. Hi, Trevor. If you look down this way, this is, I wanted to stop and show you this. Remember Mr. Smith talked about the field trip to the Sulphur River? Well, look at what they found one year. Looks like somebody's science study cards got left here. This is the Mosasaurus. And if you can see in this picture right here, you can see it in the water where they actually found it. Well, part of this guy's in the SMU library. And so what a fantastic find. They're always finding something, and it's very close to Ladonia around here. This is our high school computer lab. Ooh, chairs are out so that they can sweep. We have a yearbook staff that meets in here. We do leadership research in here. If you're taking, you can take some online classes in here as well. So it accommodates a lot of those classes and activities. Let's go this way. A couple more things to show. We have an awesome science lab for high school. We just built it out probably about five or six years ago. It has some fun aspects to it. One of them is, and we'll look at it as a fume hood, so that it enables the teachers to do some chemistry experiments that you wouldn't normally be able to do. That's our fume hood. So it evacuates. Uh, we have an, a fume evacuation system in here as well. There's room to do labs. And the way that our school is organized, if uh, Mr. Walker is our teacher, and if he's talking about clouds that day, then outside they go if there's an unusual cloud formation. Or if there's anything outside, you often see some of our classes outside just participating in, we love experiential learning. One of the fun things is that um, your junior year, they put on a big chemistry show for the elementary kids. And so that's a fun for everybody. We participate in some things like that as a whole school. In sixth grade, they build rockets 
and do a big rocket launch. And we all gather in the stands and cheer them on as they launch their rocket and then try to catch them. So that gives you a little taste of our science program. Let me flip these lights off. We store our chemicals across the way. I'll come down here for just a second and show you our VEX Robotics program. This is our last storagey kind of space in the school. As you can see, a lot of people think it's fun that we have a batting cage inside. But this is our VEX Robotics Arena. So they will actually build the robots here and test them out and get ready for competition. Really excited about um, the robotics program. The kids are excited about the program. We have a great teacher. And we can't look forward to what all is going to happen in that program this year. Let us go around the corner and we'll check out the gym real quick. So, as we walk down here, I'd like to talk just a second about um, our school community. Um, I did mention earlier that one of the things that is cited in our surveys, our parent satisfaction surveys, that their favorite thing about Greenville Christian School is school community. On our 40th anniversary, um, we had the opportunity to put this information tree up. So this has the names of everyone here that was either a student at the school or an alum that came for the celebration and what year that they graduated. So we like to call this our Eagle Nation tree. Um, it's just an exciting time. The founders are um, able to come back and join us, most of them were. And it was just great to see them and let them see the blessings of God's work in their lives and following his lead in establishing the school. So let's walk this way. So welcome to the Eagles Gym. Um, the, we have a full and healthy athletics program here. The sports that we have begin in sixth grade and they include six men football, volleyball, basketball for both boys and girls. Um, we have baseball and softball as well as track. So one of the fun things about this gym is not only does spirit happen here, but it happens in a big way. You'll turn and look at our unique bleachers. I always like to show them off. These were built by parents. So parents are very heavily invested in Greenville Christian School as a community. They built them and they stained them and they varnished them. So it's always a fun thing to come back and see when we do that. We have a healthy program here now called Eagle Nation Connect, which is uh, connecting volunteers with opportunities at school to help out. So let's go out here and check out our, our uh, fields that are in the back. Notice on our way out, we have the traditional fight song. We have a lot of championships that we've done. We just recently were area champions in uh, volleyball and our boys, our football boys are still playing. And we're about to launch our basketball season as well. This is our concession stand and some of our trophies from before. I'm going to pause just for a minute. I want to talk about another opportunity that um, kids have that go to school here. We have an opportunity for them to participate in both mission trips uh, when they get in high school. There's one that is, goes to Shreveport at this time to help a homeless organization there called the Lovewell Center. We also have an opportunity to go to Costa Rica, um, which is to work with an organization there. So it's an international mission trip and they can apply to go there as early as 10th grade. They try to earn as much money as they can so that the whole class goes um, without any cost except for the extra cost um, that are associated with that. Okay, that's not true. <laughs> In three, two, action. Another opportunity that our kids have here is to take class trips. So they take a class trip in eighth grade. They'll go to the Austin, San Antonio area and do a little stop in Waco too. And they also take a senior trip 
on the senior trip, they actually get to go to Washington, D.C. and New York area. So they work the concession stands and do a lot of other fundraising activities because their goal is that the whole class can go without any extra cost except just for spending money after they get there. Okay, let's go take a look at our fields. It's a little bit muddy out here today, but we'll walk this way and you can actually see the goalposts. And this is the practice field to the right. Behind the goalposts in the football field is our softball field, and then our baseball field connects to it as well. We compete through TAPS, which is Texas Association of Private and Parochial Schools. Um, we have both district and non-district games, but we do abide by the TAPS rules. Go Eagles! We believe that sports are a big part of learning about life and so not only do the kids learn great athletic skills here but they get an opportunity to learn a lot about character and Christian character and what that means in the life of being a champion. Okay, you can see that we have some transportation over here. Don't let that fool you. We don't run buses in the mornings and the afternoon but we do take kids out on uh, field trips and such a lot. Which brings me back to testing. That's why we have the opportunity to do that because we're not tied down to the STAR test. We do testing um, in elementary all the way up through eighth grade. It's, it is um, a test that is nationally standardized. It's very recognized and we use it, the kids don't even know that it's coming. We use it to say, how is your student doing this year? Did they progress in the, all these areas? Is there something we need to boost them with? Is there something we need to change about our curriculum? Um, do the teacher need some help in certain areas? So it really is about making your student have the best experience that they can. And how are we doing in accommodating that? Um, so that gives us a lot of extra time and a lot of ability to really focus on experiential learning. We don't practice the test at all, um, none of that. So we have a full out solid bell to bell fun and learning time here. So here we are back at the office. I want to say that again it's always great to think that we have a new family, a new Christian family that's interested in Greenville Christian School. Um, I would like to say that unfortunately we don't accommodate families that aren't Christian. We're not here to really um, take your child if you're Buddhist or um, something like that and convert them into Christian. What we are here to do is to partner with Christian families and be an extension of their home. So we love for you to know that up front and we're excited for you to be here with us. In the office right here or on the website you can find our application. Um, the process for application is that you would complete an application. Um, you would bring it up here to the office with an application fee. You would then start working with Kim Daniel, who is our office secretary. And um, Kim would walk you through the application process. We do testing to see how your child is doing in different areas and how the ways are that we might need be able to support them. And then you'll have an interview with Mr. Bowers, your family will. Um, the kids don't have to come unless they're in high school or secondary school. And then we do ask for the kids to be come and be a part of the interview. So that's us. We love knowing that you're interested in us. Um, hope that you get a feel for our excellence and our love here and that we truly love God. We love teaching your kids about God and being their very best selves to grow up in Christ. Thanks for joining us. We are Eagle Nation.